how much do you really need to like someone to go out on a date with them? Are you misleading them if you accept an invitation to somewhere with this person, but you feel like this relationship's really not going to go anywhere? Are you not guarding your heart if you do this type of thing or not guarding their heart and leading them on? In this video, I'm going to give you three tips on how to know how much you need to like someone to go out on a date with them, to be in a relationship with them, and to just move forward in the relationship. Now, to start, I want to give you my view of Christian dating in general. If you're a regular watcher of this channel, you've probably heard this before, but it's important to mention here. My view is that the healthiest approach to Christian dating is that you don't need to know that you should marry this person that you want to date. However, you should be in a season of life where you would be prepared to get married if God brought the right person into your life. There's really no biblical example of a long-term romantic relationship in scripture besides marriage. So I don't see dating as a long-term goal that's healthy. I think that it should be used as a means to an end of marriage. So if you know you don't want to marry someone, you shouldn't date them. So throughout this video, I'm going to give you some tips, but that that principle should be in the back of your mind. If you know at this point right now, you 100% do not want to marry this person, there's really no point to date that person. Even if you think it'd be fun, don't do it. However, the point of dating is to figure out if you would want to marry someone. So if you're at the season of life where you're like, I have no idea if I would want to marry this person. I don't know them enough. That's the point where you should be open to dating because that's the point of dating to answer those types of questions. So the first tip I have for you on how much you need to like someone to go out on a date or to be in a relationship is that you need to want to take the next step with that person to take that next step with that person. So what do I mean by that? A lot of times people try to answer questions about the present by trying to figure out what will happen in the future. And that's a big mistake. You don't need to know if you want to marry someone to date that person. You don't need to know if you would want to be in a dating relationship where you would be boyfriend and girlfriend to go on one singular date with that person. If they haven't asked you out to be an official couple, but they're just saying, hey, would you like to go out to dinner with me? You don't need to know if you would want to be this person's girlfriend. Or you don't need to know if you want to be in a committed dating relationship. All you need to know is, do I want to go on one date with that person? Because that's the question that's before you. So big picture, you only need to know that you want to do the next step. You don't have to know 20 steps down the line. You just have to know that one step. So if you're like, man, I really don't know if I'm going to like this person, but I wouldn't mind going on a date. That's okay. Go on a date. Or if you're like, your guys are at the point where you've gone on a few dates, you're kind of interested, it's going pretty well, and it's probably time to start entering into an official dating relationship where you're committing more and saying, all right, we're boyfriend and girlfriend, we're not going to date other people. But you're like, wow, I really don't know if I would want to marry this person. It seems like we have different different projections in life. He's going this way, I'm going that way, but we're having a good time right now and we're both Christians. I just don't know what to do for the future. All you need to know is, would I want to date this person right now? The, if you're not sure about marriage, that's the point of dating. You just have to know about the next step. Throughout the Bible, I believe that's a general principle that God's not going to show you the future, all the future, but he will tell you the next right thing to do. That's how God gives us wisdom. For example, in Proverbs 3 verses 5 through 6, it says, Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways, submit to him and he will make your paths straight. I think that part about he will make your path straight is a promise that if you trust God, he's going to teach you what to do right now. That doesn't mean he's going to show you the, your whole rest of your life. So that brings us to tip number two, focusing too much on the future will keep you frozen in singleness. So what do I mean by that? So again, we'll take that principle we just talked about. God usually shows us the next thing to actually do. However, if you refuse to move forward until God reveals your whole future, you're going to get stuck in the present season that you're in because you're asking God to give you something 
and you won't move until he gives it to you. But as we just talked about, God doesn't usually do that. He doesn't usually give your whole future. He gives you the next step to take. So rather than taking the next step and the next step, and then, you know, you look back and, oh, wow, I just took 20 steps forward because God showed me at each point what step I needed to take. Rather, if you won't take the first step because you're waiting for God to show you the next 20 steps, you're never going to move forward at all. So in Christian dating, if you refuse to move forward because you don't know the whole future, you're always going to be frozen in singleness. And finally, tip number three is really probably the most practical tip and also more of my opinion. This isn't something that I can like verify in scripture. I just think that it's a good, wise piece of advice. So if you're wondering how much you need to like someone to, to take that next step with them, maybe you're not sure. I would say that giving it one chance is appropriate and healthy. After that, you're probably forcing it. So what do I mean? Maybe a guy asks you out and you just don't really think you like him. But you're also like, I should like him. He's just one of those guys that seems like a nice person. You've been asking for a relationship. You're not crazy about him, but he's asked you out. And you feel like you wish you did like him, but you just don't. And uh, unfortunately, that happens a lot. So what should you do? Should you just give it a chance? Are you forcing it? Are you leading him on? Are you being dishonest with yourself? Will you end up in a terrible relationship because you got stuck and you don't really like him? Should you just cut it off from the beginning? Well, my advice is give it one chance. You know, go out on one date to see if it, if anything changes. And I think that's a healthy way to approach it because you're at least giving it a chance. You're not cutting it off before anything even happened. You're at least giving the guy the opportunity in this example. But let's say after that first date, your feelings don't change. After that, I would not keep forcing it. I would accept that this is what it is. You don't like that person in that way. And I wouldn't keep forcing it after that because now I think you're going to be leading that person on. If you go out on a second date, that usually means you enjoyed the first date. So at that point, I would stop. I would not keep forcing it um, just to protect your own self and to protect that person. Or let's say you're a Christian guy and there's a woman that you feel is sending you signals and you know, you're just not sure if you like this person that much, but it kind of feels like as the man, you should do something to pursue her to at least figure it out. If you do want to try something, I would say, you know, there's nothing wrong with giving it one chance. Just like the advice I gave a woman who was asked out, I don't think it would be a terrible idea if you're just not sure to try it one time, see what happens. And then after that, you know, make your decision. If your feelings changed, hey, go out on another date. Take the next step if you want to take the next step. If you gave it a chance and it just still isn't clicking, then it's totally fine just to accept it for what it is. Now, here's one thing I would like to add to that is that if you do give someone a chance, I think that if it doesn't work out and you don't want to give them another chance, the appropriate thing to do is to verbally share that in a clear way. Figure out how you want to say it in a nice way, but make sure you say it clearly of, hey, you know, I, I, I had a good time last time, but I just don't see us uh, as a romantic couple. I, I don't see us moving forward or, you know, I really like you as a friend, but I'm just not interested in you as a boyfriend or girlfriend. However you want to say it, I would just encourage you to say it clearly because you don't want to ghost that person. I have another video that I just did about ghosting and how it's pretty disrespectful and just not helpful. So... My advice is, although it's hard, although it can be uncomfortable, just honestly share that it's not working out and that way you can move forward and respect that person.